Welcome back to Tati TV. Today we're doing king crab. Oh no, I wish it was king crab, y'all. Snow crab, a little bit of corn. Um, I didn't do a potato, but I do have two eggs and some asparagus back here that you may not be able to see. If you are new to the channel, hi! If you have been rocking with me, you already know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with anyone. I'm going to get into this because I'm hungry. Oh, and you know I have my water. Before I start, let me just take a bite. Oh, I have sausages. I never have sausages. I had to find a good, good non-pork, non-beef sausage option. So hold on. Mm. Okay. So how are you guys doing today? I hope good. Um, I wonder if you guys know, I don't know if any of you guys are aware, but May is National Mental Health Month. And like I discussed in my last video, I said that I would like to kind of talk about some things that I know that have affected my mental health and my experience with coping and dealing with those things even the things that i may or may not you know be done with dealing with um the first thing i'm going to talk about is as you all know i lost my mom um i don't know if i ever said exactly what it was that i lost her to i lost her to lung cancer and i am an only child and my mother has two sisters who do not have any children. So all my life, I've been the only child, the only niece, and the only grandbaby my entire life. Until I had a child of my own. So, with Mother's Day coming up, I thought that I would just discuss a little bit about one of the most important tr triggers in my life. Um, one of the most important things that definitely uh, can affect my mental health, can put me in a not so good space, it can put me in a great space, like all at the same time. And some of the things that I try to do to just help myself deal with it. If anybody else, excuse me, that subscribes to me, have lost a parent or even a loved one or just someone closer to my auntie or uncle, you know, a grandmother, a great aunt, a cousin, like, comment down below and tell me a couple things or coping mechanisms or what you may have done, you know, just to kind of help yourself go through the grieving process. Whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty years after losing the person. Um, I guess I want to start and say I won't go into that story on here. That's another video. But I will say that, you know, when my mother passed, it was kind of traumatically at that moment. And we were together. Hmm. That's not hot. And I was her sole caregiver at the time. So I had quit my job and I was just 24-7 team mommy and helping, you know, to see if we could fight this cancer. Oh my God. This egg is so good. So... You know, unfortunately, the cancer won, and I lost my mother 13 months after her diagnosis. So I noticed that I had gained, you know, quite a massive, like, aggressive, like, form of anxiety. Like, I didn't want to leave my house. I was so afraid of driving. I didn't even want to drive around the corner to the gas station. I was so afraid of leaving my house and leaving my son that, you know, my, my main thought process was I can't leave my house. Like, I, I can't leave my son. You know, my son needs me. You know, he already lost his grandmother, whom they were very, very close because, like I said, I was an only child. And, um, you know, I was, I was taking, you know, just 
pills to help me sleep, of course, prescribed because I just couldn't, I couldn't let go of the memories of how she had passed. And I just was so terrified that, you know, if God can take me from, take my mother from me at such an early age, like I just had become so overprotective of my son. Like I wouldn't travel, I wouldn't go out of town or anything. So now, all these years later, like it's been five years and you know, I find hobbies and I find great joy in my son and just doing little things that I like. Like I love to cook. I started a food business. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's called Taste by Tatiana that comes alive every spring and summer. I don't know if, you, if I told you guys that in a previous video. But also, oh, you know, it had gotten to a point where, you know, I would be around friends or at the time I was in a relationship at the time and uh you know it was so hard to go to like their family outings or get togethers and just or just like simple get togethers on the weekend because it was so many mother daughter dynamics that you know it was hard for me to sit there and you know watch so many mothers and daughters just laughing and enjoying each other and I didn't have that like it was so hard for me to put on like a strong face I remember I would just go in the bathroom sometimes and I would just hide and I would cry and cry and cry and cry and cry because I would have to put on this strong face in front of everybody like I was okay and I'm having fun I'm enjoying myself when really every minute of every second was breaking me down like it was breaking me down to the point where I just I just couldn't do it even now, like, I'm sorry. Even now, sometimes, like, if I'm out running an errand, I remember I seen this woman out, beautiful older woman, beautiful. She was so beautiful, I couldn't take my eyes off of her. And I just literally started crying because the reality had set in with me that I would never get to see my mother at that age. And it was clear that she probably was like in her 60s or 70s, but she was beautiful. Her skin was beautiful. The way the gray hair was on top of her head, just everything about it was beautiful. And I just broke down. And, you know, I was angry. I was angry for a long time. And I was bitter. And I just couldn't understand why me. Like, I just... I completely shut myself off from the world and that just wasn't okay because of the type of person my mom was she would have never wanted me to be like that like we used to have this thing on Saturdays where we would call it sexy pajama night now, now this like ah, I just dropped the lemon in my butter like now this spans like all the way back to like when I was like in elementary school, I always had these cute little pink little satin pajamas and she would put on her pajamas and she would make herself a little drink and she would make me some tea and we would lay in the bed and she would read her book on her side and I would read my book on my side and we literally would do this every Saturday. Hence now as an adult, I have like a really, really deep love for like pajamas and sleepwear because it started off when I was young. And then we used to also have this thing in our house where we would have indoor picnics where we would move all the furniture out of the living room and put a blanket down and she would cook all of my favorite seafood, lobster and clams and all types of stuff and we would listen to music and we would just sit and talk. It's stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, that I just wish that I could still have. Um, I also have another like early memory from when I was like literally preschool age. When my mom used to come and pick me up, she would come and pick me up. And every single day in preschool, she would come and pick me up and she would bring me a glazed donut. She never skipped a day. So now, anytime I go in a gas station or go to a Krispy Kreme and I just see a glazed donut, like I just get so sad because even though it was a childhood memory, like it just... It, it really meant something to me. So sometimes just seeing a glazed donut is a trigger. Sometimes 
when it snows, it's a trigger. I remember once it was a really bad blizzard when we lived in Massachusetts, and the snow was so high, it was taller than me. And we needed to go to the grocery store. The buses weren't running. We couldn't drive. We couldn't dig our car out. So we put our snow suits on, and we pulled the sled all the way to the grocery store, and we went grocery shopping, and we pulled our groceries all the way back, and we came home, and we had a indoor picnic in the house. And it was, like, the best thing ever. So, you know, there are a lot of... A lot of things that trigger me and I know that they shouldn't so I literally started meditating every day and you know Yesterday when I thought about sharing this story in my video, I was cleaning out my garage, just doing some spring cleaning, it was really hot, and I found um, a little like laptop bag, and it had like files and folders in it, and I literally found like anger, manage anger management certificates and stuff like that that belonged to my mom, and I was like, dang, I've lived with this woman all these years of my life, I never even knew that lady took anger management. Like, I never even knew. I mean, of course, because that's my mom, I thought she was mean. But, you know, your parents always have a streak and a secret side to them that you don't see. You know, every year when I get, when I have a birthday, I pull out all of her cards and read them and I just... Reminisce and think about all the times that we did share. Oh, I'm trying to find my egg. <laughs> While we were here, I remember. <laughs> oh my God, I remember this one time she took me to this carnival. We loved carnivals. We always, always, always would go to the carnivals. And I don't know if you guys remember. Mm. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me tilt my chair. Oh. I don't know if you guys remember it's this ride it kind of almost looks like a spaceship and when you go into it it kind of twirls around twirls around twirls around really really fast and you like stick the gravity like you stick to the inside of it like they don't strap you in or everything that was her favorite ride at the carnival and I couldn't stand it because it used to make me so nauseous and uh, <laughs> we went one time we was in there and I kept saying mommy no please 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 Please, I don't want to get into it. And she was like, come on, baby girl, I got you. So we go on this ride. You should have seen me in there. I'm all, ugh, stinking. Mom, I'm going to be sick. So we get out, and I'm walking. We're walking past the grass, and I just pass out in the grass. And she just lays there, and she's laughing. And she's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm going to throw up because you made me get in that ride. And she just laughed and laughed and laughed at me like, it was funny. I didn't see anything funny. I was nauseous. And she made me get on that ride. Mm. You know, with Mother's Day coming up, I've literally, every single day, every single day it's hard for me to, to get up. It's hard for me to know that on Sunday everyone else around me will be celebrating a mother, you know, in their life. And me... I can't shower my mother. Oh, I dropped the piece. Ah. Good thing it was on my lap on my napkin. You know, I can't shower my mother with gifts. I can't wake her up the way that I've woken her up all of these years because she's not here. You know, I, I really have changed a lot because of it. Some of it has really damaged, you know, my personality. And I never want anybody to feel sorry for me. But at the same time, I have to be very careful when it does come to my mental health. Because, you know, sometimes there's people who... Why do I keep dropping this lemon in here? Sometimes there's people who truly, truly don't have the correct words to say when you're dealing with something which is definitely on them because I don't expect people to you know 
Mm. To be able to, you know, have the, the, the correct words, you know, when you're mourning such a great loss like that. But, ooh, this is so good. She was so beautiful. And as you know, my son will be graduating high school very soon. And I just wish that she was here to share that with me. I wish that she could see her grandchild. I wish that she could be there to to watch him do something so great. Oh. So the gym. The gym is one of my major coping mechanisms. I've always been a gym person since I was like a teenager. So I do a lot of my coping with that. I just take it out on the gym. You know, and I've tried to go and talk to the doctor about it and they're so quick to prescribe pills for this, pills for that, pills for depression, pills for anxiety. Do I have a prescription? For that, yes. Do I take them? No. Why? And if anyone is watching out here, please don't, you know, do as I do. I want you to pick the best route for you. I'm not a medical professional. I just know what works for me. I just didn't want to become dependent on something that may alter my mind and the way that I think like I felt like with God that I was strong enough to combat my own thoughts and keep my thoughts, you know, on a pretty manageable level, even dealing with the anxiety and the depression of literally watching my mother take her last breath in front of my eyes. I'm doing all this talk. I never even offered y'all a piece. Here you go. You can really taste the lemon in there. Mm. Oh my gosh. You know, I just want anybody out there to know that it is okay if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling like nobody understands and you need someone to talk to, I don't care if you email me. My email is tatitv1123 at gmail.com. You ever seen that meme where they say, check on your strong friend? I was the strong friend out here holding down and giving the best advice to, you know, my friends, whether they were dealing with Relationship issues, parenting issues, issues within themselves, work, whole time. I'm at home, crying my eyes out every night because here I am being so strong for everybody else. And I just, sometimes you need somebody to be strong for you. But do not confuse that with the fact that it's contingent upon your growth as well. You ultimately need to be strong for yourself, but it's okay sometimes to know that you have someone in your corner to talk to and unload and just really, really say the things that you hold in your mind. One reason I kind of started this YouTube, I just want anybody else to, to know that it is okay. It's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to to speak out loud what it is. I know a lot of people have fears with even admitting it. The first step is admitting it. That is, this is the first step. 
And I used to be exactly like that. I used to be like, I'm fine. You know, I'm okay. Like, but sometimes some of the comments and things that, that people who were close to me, you know, and not family, just, you know, friends, like people who were close to me would say that I was acting, you know, I was bitter. I was hateful. And I was because, you know, that day I was sitting downstairs in this very kitchen because this was my mother's house. And, you know, we had ate our breakfast like we always did. And we would always watch our court shows. And I was washing the dishes. And she went upstairs. She's like, okay, baby girl, I'll be waiting for you. I said, I'll be up there in a minute. Let me just, you know, finish the dishes. And I heard her coughing. And, you know, I didn't know that that would be the last time that I would walk up those steps to my mother alive. It really messed me up. Ooh, I'm not about to get emotional. Let me take a bite. This, this right now, this has helped me cope. This is, this is help. So I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for watching this video because this is a very hard, touchy subject for me to deal with, but it's something that I haven't been able to let go of. And I'm trying. I just haven't yet. But I pretend really well. Mm. So delicious. <laughs> I just dropped the napkins on the floor. So I'm just going and tear the ones I got on my lap apart. I got like two pieces left, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it encourages you to check on anyone, you know, in your life. Who, you know, may have become a little distant or... You may not have talked to them. You know, sometimes I feel like people be like, well, they didn't reach out and they didn't call and text me, so why I got to reach out and call and text them? You never know what people are going through. Sometimes that phone call, that text is exactly what they needed. Chow, it almost got real in here. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to cry. Yeah, but I know it's coming. I know as we grow, and I probably one day need to talk about it. I probably one day need to speak on it out loud and say in depth, you know, what really happened. You know, and say it to someone. Other to my other than myself, over and over, back and forth in my head. Oh, yummy! Mm. I barely even touched this water. Oh, this is so good. Just know that it's okay to ask for help. Excuse me. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to seek professional help and it's okay to seek out your own coping mechanisms. Everything isn't for everybody. And some things work differently for other people. This is my last piece. Okay, let me get rid of this thing. I'm gonna move this out the way. 
Well, that is it, you guys. Thank you for stopping by. As usual, like I always say, my Tati Tibbet of the day, if you woke up with the attitude, I mean, if you, woo, <laughs> if you woke up and put your feet on the floor, the devil had an attitude, but God had a plan. And don't forget, it is National Mental Health Month, so don't be afraid to reach out for yourself or to reach out for someone that you love. You never know who just might need it. Bye.